Hey guys, this is going to be the tutorial video of the previous video of the Fall of Arcana advanced layering technique as seen before previously in the demo. Now we kind of already went over doing layers in the other Artemis video. Um, you can check that out in the description. It's something, it's more of the simple technique of the layering. This is a bit more advanced because there's way more instruments there's melody and then there's a filtering knob here too. So if you remember from the other video, we have this intensity knob that is connected to the automation of the volume. So as this goes up, it fades in instruments. The guitar is at the very bottom. As you can see here, it's just playing the guitar. And when we bring this knob up, the choir comes in. We can keep going, and I think the drums come in next. Yeah, they're almost there. And I think the next instrument is the string. So it's basically um, adding layers of instruments instead of, you know, cross-fading between different complete loops. So this is the actual complete loop. It just can be broken down and l layers of instruments can be stripped on or stripped off. So now we also have a second knob here to bring in the melody. So basically this is the same thing. They're mu this doesn't control the melody. The melody is not part of this intensity knob at all. So even if the intensity is all the way up here, there's no trumpet melody, there's no French horn, and there's no strings. It's connected to this knob, melody select, which is the third knob I made here. So if you notice when it's all the way at the bottom, none of the instruments are actually playing. So let's make this here. When we turn it up a little bit, you can see the first instrument on the melody select knob are the strings. So zero, there's no strings. Bring it up a little bit, the strings are there. And now we can crossfade in a French horn. So as the French horn comes in, the strings will go down. And to make this work is to make sure you do not have any automation for the intensity knob at all. There has to be no automation whatsoever. So if you set the intensity knob and actually set automation to be zero, it's going to be zero or no matter where this knob is. They're going to conflict each other. So make sure you, you have zero automation on your first intensity knob. And so the last one here is the trumpet, which only comes in when it's at the very end. Like I said, what makes this work really well is that the melody doesn't have to be there every time. So when it's all the way at the bottom, there's no melody at all. Now, I bet a bunch of you are wondering about this transitional fade one with the cutoff filter. This one's a little bit tricky because I actually did it the long way and had each of the instruments have their own cutoff filter. I know I could channel them to, through one mixer bus and have them all share the same thing, but you know, I, sometimes you can be versatile and only have a few instruments be applied to this. Maybe you, you can keep the drums and that doesn't cut off and f um, that doesn't have the low pass cutoff filter, but the other instruments do. Um, it could be used for any sort of thing, but to make sure it was more versatile, I wanted to purposely have each instrument have this cutoff. And now how I did this to get this automation was you actually right click on the cutoff knob that's connected to it. So let's see how we can make the cutoff knob there. When we have, when we pick an instrument, we can add effects. So we click this plus button, we can add different effects. 
So let's say, let's add this, um, let's see, maybe this flanger. Let's see what this sounds like. Let's just make the guitar solo right now. So yeah, the flanger is there. I would never use this, it's kind of weird. But let me just show you, if you wanted to add automation to this effect, you right click and add automation, and there it is. And we're not going to use this, we're just going to delete it. So that's basically what I did. I added automation from this cutoff knob. So when this is all the way at the end, it's all the way up, meaning that there's actually, this isn't really active yet. So when, when you start moving the knob, it starts to be more apparent. And when it's all the way at the bottom, because of the way this uh, filter works, you actually don't hear anything at all. It's almost like it's muting it. So what happens when we do this to all the instruments? Well, there's another track there, but was this cut off using the cutoff filter? Not really. It actually fades in. So I'm actually automating both the cutoff knob and the volume knobs of this secondary loop. So you can see here, this is the interlude loop, which sounds like this. that actually doesn't have that effect. If you can see here, I clicked on the synth chords interlude, chords interlude, um, there's no effect. It's just the volume. So I'm actually just using the regular volume automation. Again, I, you can do that by right clicking the volume knob and add automation. Um, I can't add it because I already added it here, but see it now I have the option to remove it. So that's pretty much what it does. See, as it's fading this in, it's filtering these out. See, the low pass cutoff is starting to become more active as this fades in with the volume. And it gives this sort of effect. You could easily just use volume for the whole thing, but if you used volume in this case, it would be a little bit tricky because you already have the intensity knob controlling the volume automation already. So this is just another way to use that. Um, in a game engine, it might actually be easier to fade stuff in and out just by lines of code, but in FMOD, it might be a bit tricky and you might have to work around it. But in this case, I like the effect of the cutoff and cross-fading these in. Let's hear it one more time. Alright guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more FMOD demos and tutorial videos. Thank you.